Yeah, hi everybody, this is uh, Ryan here with you again today. Um, just did a video on uh, my PDI tuner and uh, also my uh, Bosch uh, HGS200. Um, I've had a problem with the, I suspected to be a sensor, a uh, output knock sensor or a soot sensor, some, some companies call it that. But uh, we're going to change that out today. I picked one up over in Idaho and um, before I got out of there, there was a dealer there that was up until late, until midnight and I grabbed it. Uh, they're kind of an expensive sensor. So I would uh, really narrow things down before I shell out the money um, for one of these. And, um, I'm going to show you the sensor and uh, what the process is to, uh, to change it out, at least on a uh, Kenworth uh, T660 and a T680, I guess, would be similar too. But I'll go ahead and show you the sensor. It comes in a box like this. It's a Cummins part. I believe even the pack cars, uh, they're made by Cummins. The DPF and all that is, for the pack cars is made by Cummins as well, I believe. Just, uh, it's kind of what it looks like there's two of these on here on this truck and most trucks I believe all trucks but uh, that have a DPF there's one up on the engine by the exhaust uh, where it comes out the turbo it has a shorter cord I believe but there's a little module on here but um, there is a core charge on these I believe it was like $85 $86 or something that means you know with a core um, you got to they'll charge you that price and you have to return the old one and you'll get that money back it's the same thing with a lot of starters alternators turbos egr cores most of those all have core charges on them and depend you know what they are what the price might be so so i always like to make sure i turn in my old parts um hopefully i can mail this one back and get almost a hundred dollars back on it but i'll uh, show you kind of yeah there's a kind of see <laughs> yeah so I think with the core charge eighty seven fifty so I mean tax and all that it, it's over five hundred dollars for the sensor so but um but uh I'm gonna go out and show you where this where it's located at and then we'll get started uh taking everything apart here it's uh not too big of a job I, I changed one on my uh my T six eighty couple of years ago so, um, pretty simple procedure and tools and there's no no programming or anything like that it's pretty well plug and play but uh, we'll go on outside and I'll kind of show you what we're dealing with here located behind these steps so with these you just take these these bolts out and this whole side panel pulls off so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and uh, we'll see what's behind it okay so we got that that set of steps off there got that off to the side and I'll actually show you where this one's at um, I'll probably take this other panel off too to make things uh, a little easier but it's right here so it unplugs and there's a bolt in it, there's just two bolts. And uh, then you got the uh, that cord that goes down to the probe, goes down around on the other side of the uh, the DPF or the SCR there. But um, I'm gonna take this other panel off here so I got a little bit more room uh, to work here, make things a little bit easier. And uh, it should only take a couple minutes to switch this thing out. I mean, it probably takes longer to pull everything apart here than it does to switch it out. Um, one little tip I will give you guys if you're working in a truck stop and uh, Oh, sorry, it's a little windy out here, so I hope it doesn't cause too much quality in the, uh, the sound. But um, when you're going to do things like this in the truck stop, I would be very strategic about the way you park. Um, you can see I'm on the end here on the side. If I was going to work on the other side, I would try to get a spot on the other end. Um, because I've, and there's spots open everywhere in here. There's like 100 spots. But I, I've been doing this stuff before. I have everything torn apart, laying in the parking spot, and I'll have something more on. That will literally like, kind of pull up and back. Like I have all my tools laid out, and they'll like start backing in next to you. And I'm like, what WTF? I mean, like, dude, there's like 100 other spots you can park, and they will. They'll literally. I don't know why. I don't know if they're just clueless or what, but they will like back right in next to you when you're trying to do something. So, if you get a spot like on the end, whatever side you're working on, it makes things a lot easier. So um, you don't have to worry about that because they will. I mean, it, it's crazy. I mean, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and take this other side off, and. Uh, be back with you in a second here and uh, get to the, you know, the bottom sorry, the bottom side of that uh, probe okay so well, I just got that other panel took it off that one there it just 
kind of twists and pulls out. It doesn't actually bolt in or anything, so those are pretty easy to take off. Uh, I know I was mentioning about where you park at when you're doing this, and there's another kind of a big safety thing. Um, as I said, these guys, they'll see you doing something, they will back in right next to you. So if you are working on this truck, or, you know, um, if you got your legs hanging out, I mean, it, it, it could be dangerous. That's why I always like to be in a spot like this where I don't have to worry about some more. I'm trying to back in next to me. Uh, but I'll get underneath here and um, these places are pretty nasty, so I'm gonna try to wear a little clothes or something. But, uh, so here's the probe right here. This is the outlet. This is that uh, the end of that sensor. So we just gotta turn that out. And it, the outlet one, it's usually gonna be on the out. So this is the SCR up here. This is the actual DPF. So you have the catalyst, the DPF, and it goes up into the SCR. But um, this is the one that's like your final, it's telling how clean, how much soot difference there is from the, the inlet when it's up by the turbo to this one. So it's basically telling the efficiency of your system. So um, so that's what's probably throwing that code. I'll show you a couple other things while we're down here that are kind of unrelated. Um, you have a differential pressure sensor. Uh, which tells you know from one side of the DPF to the other that kind of tells if there's any pressure differences in there and then um, your, your temperature sensors there's three there's one here there's one over here and there's one up there and they all they all plug in up here they're all separate uh, two of them are the same but there's one that's longer that's a different part number um, I just replaced this one when I did the DPF because uh, they'll get kind of golden and stuff so that's that but uh, I'm gonna get some tools together here, and then um, we're gonna go ahead and change this sensor out. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is unplug this. That's right here. Just push down on that clip, pull it out. Then um, we're gonna have to remove this. There's a bolt here and a bolt here. Looks um, we'll like they got nuts on them, so we're gonna have to take that off. And uh, on the cord going down on the other side up through here, there's uh, a couple zip ties. So we'll probably have to cut those and put some new zip ties on it. Then uh, it was just underneath and I showed you where the probe was there on the exhaust outlet. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take that out and um, switch all this out real quick. And, uh, get right back with you. Okay, there's that probe again. Um, at least the 22 millimeter fits it pretty good. So uh, it's extremely tight. So basically, you want to get that turned out of there, and um, then, like I said, we can cut the zip ties on that and go ahead and pull the sensor out and uh, replace it. So. Okay. So now we've got the. Um, I took the little box, the module loose at the top, and, and cut the zip ties and fed it back down to the bottom here. Um, on this probe, uh, it was pretty tight. I actually had to use a, um, I keep a propane torch like this in the truck, especially for winter time for the padlocks and everything else and quick release valves on the trailers. It's uh, very, it's all, got me out a lot of pinches. And, um, but here, I uh, had to put some heat, you know, around the bottom. And uh, then once I did that, you know, it was easy to break loose. But the problem was, uh, this whole, it all wants to spin. It wants to spin the cord, and you don't want to destroy this because I want to get my eighty-seven dollars back on a core. So I just fed it down, and that way I can uh, I can spin the whole thing as I'm turning it out, and won't destroy anything. So, uh, but I'm only going to finish taking that out, and then uh, we'll put the new one in. Okay, so I got the uh, new one installed there. Um, everything zip tied, tightened up, plugged in. Um, I, on these plugs out here, I always like to use some uh, dielectric grease. Uh, you can probably get that at any automotive store to put in there just to protect those fittings from any water and salt and corrosion. Um, let's see, at the bottom. Yeah, I got put in down here at the bottom. Um, I think it'll pretty much stop when it's tight and it won't be able to spin, but it, it, it's a pretty well definitive stopping point uh, where you know where to stop tightening it. Uh, zip tied there and it should be all good to go so now I'm just going to go ahead and put the skirting back on and uh, start the truck up and do a, uh, a force region here if it will do it uh, sometimes it won't uh, 
if the requirements, if the soot level isn't high enough, it won't do it. So I might have to wait until it, until it gets there. But um, other than that, it's a pretty easy project. Um, so I mean, it's expensive, uh, but uh, not very hard to, to do. So, but um, there we go. I'll put it back together and uh, we'll try starting it up. Okay, we just put the uh, outlet knock sensor in, so I'm going to start the truck up and uh, make sure everything's working correctly and uh, see if it'll do a regen. It uh, it may or may not. I know on mine you have this uh, button here, but uh, unless certain requirements are met, um, you know, telling the computer like if the soot content gets high enough, operating temperatures and all that, it uh, may or may not do it. Um, so we'll give it a try. <laughs> and let the air pressure and then build up. Okay, I just got my air pressure up to where it popped off and um, I'm gonna go ahead and see if it'll do a regen now. So let's just push this down and hold it for a few seconds, and there it goes. So when that light, it idle up by itself, and that light will come on, and you know it's on a regen. And usually at a, uh, it 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 take sometimes 45 minutes to an hour to complete it. But um, why it's doing that, uh, I'm gonna go out and put those two skirting panels on, and uh, just let it do its thing and, and clean out. But um, so I hope that kind of helps you out and. Um, we're getting into those kind of troubles. If anybody's ever got any questions, feel free to, to message us. And um, if you like the videos, uh, you know, uh, subscribe and, and, and like them. I appreciate you watching. Thanks.